Well, good day there. Welcome to another episode of the Typewriter video series. And today I'm going to talk about another typewriter in my collection, the little Hermes Rocket. So stay tuned. I've had a number of portable typewriters in my collection over the years, including the uh, Royal Mercury. I've had three Olivetti Lettera 22s. I think the Corona 4 counts as a portable if you take it out of its case. But one of probably the most portable typewriter that I've ever owned in my collection is this little Hermes Rocket. And this is a special typewriter. It has a special significance to me, a special backstory. A good friend gave this typewriter to me. It belonged to his father-in-law, who was a U.S. Air Force officer and engineer and was involved in the development of the SR-71 spy plane. So this is an interesting typewriter, has an interesting backstory. Let's open it up and take a look at it. Okay, the typewriter is a small typewriter that has an integral clamshell lid. And it's kind of a thin type of metal that is stamped out and it's coated with this kind of crinkly finish. It has two little support pads on the bottom so you can support the typewriter vertically. And as you can hear, it has an integral handle that pulls out. And there's also some little rubber footsies, feet on the bottom, and mine are all worn flush. Um, so the way this typewriter opens up is there's these two buttons just to inboard of the handles, back from the handles, push them and lift up the front of the typewriter. So this is a cool little typewriter. This particular example dates from 1953. It's of course gray and it has this red trim Hermes rocket. Kind of cool. What I like about the styling on this typewriter is the two ribbon cover halves are kind of conical shaped. They do really kind of have that styling like a rocket nose cone, you know? And I can imagine in the early 1950s uh, that uh, was kind of the beginning of the space age. And although these machines were actually designed, they first came out in the mid 1940s, I believe. Let's turn around and look at the back of the machine with the case off, the lid off. And you can see the lettering uh, from where this is made. You can see the two little holes where the the rear latch pins of the lid slide in there, and you always get this little scuffing going on. Okay, we'll start with the left side of the carriage back here. So the carriage return lever is very short on this typewriter. It's probably the shortest of any lever that I've seen on any of my typewriters. And it folds up like that into a 90 degree angle vertical position for releasing, uh, for returning the carriage. And then uh, there is this little knob here that you have to slide. It's in a lock position right now. Um, it doesn't allow the, the carriage to uh, advance the line. And you have to slide it forward to release the lever. When you slide it all the way forward, you're in the number two or the two line spacing. Then you have to slide it back to the one line spacing if you want to do single spacing. So that's the line advance. The platen roller on this machine is pretty small, pretty tiny in diameter. Because of that, I found it's hard to put cardstock through this machine because the stiffer papers like cardstock have to make a, a tight bend to go underneath that tiny little platen. I would guesstimate it's obviously metric. I haven't really measured it, but it looks to me about less than an inch in diameter. So uh, on the left side of the carriage, of course, you have your carriage knob right here. On the back left, there is the left side margin release, and you push the little round button down, and then you can slide the margin, left margin adjustment back and forth. There's a little red indicator arrow that points to the scale on the back paper support. Um, this, these typewriters do not have tabs. So there's no tab adjustments anywhere. Uh, there is a paper uh, support that flips up in the vertical position. Let me show you that, like that. And it will flip down either left or right side, whichever you prefer. So moving over to the right side of the platen, you will have, again, the right margin adjustment sliding along there. Um, then this right here is the tension release for the pressure rollers. So to 
to release a piece of paper or to adjust the uh, alignment of your paper, you pull that forward. The next adjustment or control on the typewriter is this little knob protruding, and this is the carriage release lever. And I'll talk to you more later about that. Uh, but basically, it uh, releases the, uh, the linear rack gear underneath the carriage from the escapement gear, allowing you to move the carriage between the limits of the margin stops. And as you can hear, it has a nice little bell sound. One of the more brilliant sounding bells of all the typewriters I've owned, so it's kind of cute in that regards. And of course, the right side platen knob. And the paper bale that flips up like this has its own scale that corresponds to the scale on the paper support. And it's a little flat rectangular um, paper bale, but it's, it's rather sturdy um, grade of metal. Okay, we get to the segment area in the middle of the typewriter. Of course, you have the two uh, ribbon cover, half covers, that, that hinge back. And they're very thin but rigid metal. The whole body of this is like stamped from, from sheet metal. And it kind of has this kind of military look to me. Um, anyway, here are the ribbon spools. And they go through these little guides right here. And it has an automatic ribbon reverse. There is a little um, kind of a scale right here and a little triangular protrusion for supporting like a card, a business card or whatever with a hole in it. And you can move the carriage back and forth. You can put a ballpoint pen or a pencil in that hole and you can draw horizontal lines or move the carriage up and down and draw vertical lines on your paper. Uh, this is a carriage shift machine, but because the platen is so small and the machine is so light, it's not a bad machine at all to shift, um, even though it's carriage shift. It's a, just a tiny little carriage. And of course, your um, ribbon uh, vibrator. There is no color adjustment on the ribbon vibrator, so it is always using the top edge of the ribbon. So I found what's best on this is, of course, uh, to use a, a single color ribbon. And when you wear out the top half of the ribbon, ribbon, simply take it out, reverse it upside down, put it back on, and then you can use the other side of the ribbon. So I really don't advise using this typewriter for two color ribbons, obviously, because you're not going to be able to easily get the other color. Okay, for the keyboard of the typewriter, we'll start in the upper left corner. Of course, this is an older style keyboard, so you do not have a number one. You'll have to use the lowercase l. Um, of course, it starts with number two, and the quote mark is above it. And it's uh, an American style keyboard. Uh, this is this double arrow key up in the upper left corner is your margin release. So when you, you can go to behind, uh, beyond the left margin or beyond the right margin also. Um, up here on the upper right corner is the backspace key, and of course your standard uh, shift and shift lock keys. You have a quarter and a half, and uh, the at symbol and the cent where they're normally at, a standard American keyboard. When I first got this typewriter, I was very excited to use it. I cleaned it up, and I started using it quite a bit, and I noticed that it began to have an intermittent problem with the carriage not advancing after letters were typed. And uh, it kind of vexed me for a while because this was a few years ago and I wasn't really all that adept at typewriter repair. But I dug into the machine and not really knowing uh, much about servicing the escapement and the line spacing and character spacing kind of mechanism in the typewriter, um, I ended up making a an ad hoc repair, quote, repair to this typewriter, which was, I was noticing that the, uh, it was mostly the letters in the middle two thirds uh, of the segment that had, that had this problem more so than the letters on the end. And I noticed there was this um, curved bar underneath that, uh, like a universal bar, that all the type bar linkages would actuate, and that was supposed to actuate the escapement mechanism to, to do the, line, the character spacing after every character. And it looked to me like that bar wasn't being pushed a little far enough, quite far enough on all these letters. And so, with not knowing what I was doing, um, each of the linkages on the type bar mechanism has a little angle or an elbow to it. And I had a bunch of spare brass tubing 
um, something like, I don't know, three sixteenths or maybe an eighth of an inch uh, brass tubing. And I cut all the, maybe three quarter of an inch pieces for all these middle linkages and I attached them on the ends of these little linkages underneath there with the intention of making the linkages just a little bit bigger in diameter and in, in doing so I fixed the problem. It was able to um, reliably uh, space itself after every character and in the process of doing so I think I actually managed to make the feel of this typewriter a little bit better than it normally would be because I've, uh, I have a friend who has a very similar uh, typewriter, Hermes Baby, very similar mechanism, and doesn't quite have the same feel. This one I really, I really enjoy the feel of, and it has a nice dark imprint, as I'll show you here in a few minutes. But that was kind of an ad hoc fix that I did a few years ago, and I haven't had any problem with that since. I have, though, used this typewriter quite a bit in the last year. I used it uh, about a year ago uh, on the autumn of 2015 on my long car trip, and I did, did a lot of typing with this. And in the process of doing so, I started putting some, some wear and tear on the escapement mechanism in the rack gear, and uh, I started having problems with it skipping after letters, like not just one space. Sometimes it would skip three or four spaces and it was very uh, troublesome to me. And I found there's some metal parts in the machine that are wearing and uh, I had to figure out how to compensate for that. I'm not gonna tear the machine apart today to show you. Okay, let me start uh, by showing you, this is the underneath side of the right part of the carriage assembly. And there is this uh, flat bar that protrudes uh, along the length of the platen carriage assembly and there is a toothed rack. You can see the, the teeth on that bar right there. Well this is a linear rack gear and that rack engages with the round gear on the escapement gear which is down in the middle of the typewriter. And uh, it's the escapement gear has to engage this rack and that's what permits it to advance every time you type a letter or use the space bar. Um, but when you are using the carriage release lever here on the, on the right side of the platen, what you're actually doing is if you can see that bar here, you're actually flipping that r linear rack here out of the way, kind of at an angle, and you're disengaging that row of teeth from the gear, the, from the escapement gear. And that is what causes you to be able to disengage the escapement and move the carriage back and forth. And what I discovered was the angle uh, that this bar sits at, it has to sit exactly parallel to the uh, escaping gear itself. And what was happening was this gear, this linear rack gear was sitting at a slight angle. So only the corner of it was hitting the round escaping gear, causing it to skip. And it's, it's caused by what, what controls the angle of that is actually the uh, carriage release lever arm linkage that goes down and controls the angle of this thing. This was actually bent. This little arm got bent slightly and it causes this linear rack ear to sit at a slightly wrong angle and, and it's not quite hitting the escapement gear fully on like it should be. So this uh, little arm in here is kind of a soft metal because I corrected this problem, I reshaped it a few months ago and then when I went typing with it more recently it started doing it again and I had to reshape it again. So th there's a little bit of a soft metal in this linkage that causes this problem and so it's probably a combination of that and it could be that the teeth of either the linear rack gear or the actual teeth of the escaping gear are uh, getting worn due to age uh, and just the time in service since the early 1950s. And uh, it's one of those things where we may have to end up uh, either retiring the machine or maybe finding a donor machine for parts. But while we're here, I just wanted to show you, you can also see one of the pressure rollers underneath the, the, the platen roller. And if you flip the platen release letter, lever up, it releases the tension of that pressure roller. The pressure roller is attached to this bracket here, which you can pull out of the way with the platen release lever. Well, here's some backwards typing for you.
It has a nice action to it, and it's really not all that loud, although my microphone is so close to the typewriter, it probably sounds very loud. But it's a very uh, nice and dark imprint, and uh, I don't know if you can see that all that well, but it makes a very nice dark imprint. It's a 12 character per inch elite font. And this is one of the things I love about this typewriter is it, it types so well, so dark of an imprint, so clear. The alignment, the vertical alignment of the letters is so nice. It really is a great writing machine and it really is truly portable. And here is an example of the type style of the typewriter itself. Lowercase on the left, uppercase on the right. As I say, it has a very nice uniform dark imprint. It's a, it's a great typing machine. And to stow the typewriter and back into its storage position, you first want to push the carriage return lever in, and then this little knob, the line spacing, push it all the way up. It'll latch the carriage return lever in the, in the collapse position, and then you just fold it back like that. Then you're going to have to manually center the two knobs on the frame of the typewriter visually. Then next you take your case, you put the back of the case, it has these two pins, one here and one here. You put those in the back holes and then it clips shut like that, simple as can be. This typewriter truly is a portable typewriter to carry anywhere. And one of the common ways that I carry it is I have this man bag, this uh, a shoulder bag, and um, it's not all that big. I actually keep a little typing mat uh, with me when I'm uh, carrying this typewriter. So I always have a mat, so I just take the typing mat, I fold the typewriter, or the mat around the typewriter, and I slip it, I slip the typewriter right into the carrying bag. And uh, there's plenty of room in this bag for typing paper, correction tape, pens, pencils, or whatever. And uh, so I can just put it over my shoulder, such as this. And uh, I've even been known to ride a motorcycle uh, with this uh, shoulder bag and this typewriter. So very portable typewriter, truly portable. You can take it anywhere. Uh, that's the greatest thing about these Hermes rockets. If you get one that's, that types so well like mine does, it's just a joy to take different places and it's so small and not really that heavy. So I mentioned earlier that this Hermes rocket has this mechanical issue of that um, carriage release lever arm and the way the angle of the linear rack gear is and probably some wear on either that rack gear or the teeth of the escapement gear causing problems and if I continue to have more problems with this typewriter in the future I'm going to have to come to the decision of retiring the typewriter. I don't think I want to get rid of it because it has some personal importance to me, because of its backstory, uh, my friend whose father-in-law uh, first owned it. Um, so I am going to keep this typewriter even if it's going to be retired just as a display typewriter. But this is one of the things that you have to consider when you're a typewriter collector is because parts aren't being made for these machines anymore. Um, there is the possibility that time will come when you can't fix a problem in your machine and you're going to have to decide am I going to keep the machine as a non-working display typewriter? Um, is it going to be a memento, a family heirloom or are you going to be spending the money to maybe to find a, a donor machine for parts to keep the thing running? So that's one of the responsibilities of being a typewriter owner. A collector is if you're going to keep the machine running you have to be willing to accept the fact that you may have to get parts for it that are hard to find. But I love this little typewriter. This Hermes Rocket truly is the most portable typewriter in my collection and I really can take it just about anywhere. I hope you guys enjoy your typewriters and I hope you can find another little small portable typewriter in good shape like mine is. And until next time this is Joe Van Cleve, and you have yourselves a great day.